Hello everyone. So today we are going to start with another very important branch under geology that is crystallography. So in this lecture we are actually going to see what are actually crystals and further we will be looking at the crystal forms, the elements of symmetry and so many other things. So before wasting much of our time let's get started with the topic. Now before proceeding further into the topic let's first look at what are crystals. So guys crystals are solids which possess a regular geometrical shape. So they have a regular arranged shape and it is called a crystal. So these crystals are bounded by faces which lie parallel to the planes of atoms in the crystal structure and in addition to faces crystals contain edges and solid angles arranged in a regular border. So guys when you talk about crystals they are solids at first they are solids and the second thing is that they have a regular geometric shape. So they are solids, they have a regular geometric shape, then they contain faces, they have edges and they have solid angles, So you also call as your vertex. Now these crystals or crystalline solid is a solid material we have seen whose constituents. So if there is any solid material, it's a matter, then matters are made up of atoms, molecules or ions. We have studied this in chemistry. Okay, So these are constituted of atoms or molecules and these atoms or molecules are arranged in highly ordered microscopic structures forming a crystal lattice that extends in all direction. So these constituent atoms or molecules they are arranged in an ordered structure. I mean if there is a pattern like A, B, C then this pattern will continue in the whole lattice A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. I mean there is a fixed proper ordered structure of atoms. The way these atoms are arranged, I mean they are not arranged in a haphazardous manner like uh, this is A here, this is B here, this is C, then this is C, E, F or anything like that. But there is a proper arrangement, a fixed arrangement of molecules or atoms and crystals. So first thing is that they are solids, second they have a regular geometric shape and the third thing is the atoms are arranged in a fixed manner or in an ordered manner. All right. Then in addition microscopic single crystals are usually identifiable by their geometrical shape. So definitely if the atoms are arranged in a ordered in a fixed manner then definitely they would be having a fixed geometrical shape okay and consisting of flat spaces with specific characteristic orientations okay then these things we'll be looking further when we studying about the different types of crystals the monoclinic cubic system monoclinic system orthorhombic system and so on and the scientific study of crystals and crystal formation is known as crystallo Graphy. We have seen that in crystallography we are going to study about the crystal, the crystal formation. Okay. And the next thing is that the process of crystal formation via mechanism of crystal growth is called crystallization or solidification. So we have seen what are crystals, what is crystallography, what is crystallization or solidification. So you have understood what are crystals. Crystals are solids. They are solid, they have regular geometric shape and their atoms are arranged in a fixed manner. The next important thing you need to know is what is a unit cell. So friends, unit cell is the smallest group of atoms, okay? So when these uh, crystals are formed, okay, this is maybe a crystal, all right? This is a crystal. So this crystal might be formed from a single unit, okay? So when this unit might be repeated further, then this whole crystal might be built. Okay. So faces of a crystal bear a def definite relation to the internal structural pattern of atoms. There is a definite relation with the faces and with the internal structure, with the internal arrangement of atoms of the crystal. And this structural pattern consists of units. 
so in very simple way these units are the smallest group of atoms with which the overall crystal has been formed okay so the smallest group of atom which has overall symmetry of a crystal and from which the entire lattice can be built up by repetition in three dimensions okay definitely you have to repeat it in three dimensions it is a 3d structure okay now there is a word lattice over here what is this lattice a lattice is an ordered ray of points so there are ray of array of points and these are ordered so ordered array of points describing the arrangement of particles that form a crystal okay see so see here is a crystal lattice what is this crystal lattice this is the example of a crystal this is a crystal and see there are small small points arranged in a def definite array okay so see these points are there okay now what happens these points are arranged in a proper structure and this is called a crystal lattice what is the importance of this crystal lattice see here is an example of a unit cell so see these points are here okay joining these points you get a structure so this is the smallest structure see the same structure over here the same structure is present over here when you repeat this structure in all these lattices okay you get your fully crystal constructed all right so getting what is crystal lattice and unit cell when you will join all these uh, points with each other in a definite shape joining this you will get the whole crystal with you and the smallest unit formed by these lattice points is a unit cell see this is a unit cell if this is a cube here you continue joining the cube like this at the end you will get a structure so this is your whole crystal and the smallest unit through which this crystal is formed is called unit cell and the structure of arranged points by joining which uh, by uh, continuing jo joining of these points you get or crystal okay so this is your crystal lattice the next important topic is interfacial angles interfacial interfacial means between the faces between the faces of a crystal so if there is a crystal so by the name you can understand there are the faces of this crystals and between the faces whatever the angle is being formed this is known as interfacial angle so in crystallography the angle subtended by the normals to two crystal faces okay if this is a crystal face here is the normal sorry this is not the normal here is the normal and here is the normal then the angle subtended between them is known as your interfacial angle okay and it is not the external angle observed or the internal angle between them it is however 180 degree minus the internal angle okay so uh, one more thing a goniometer is used to measure interfacial angles there is a, this is an important question which instrument is used to measure your interfacial angles it is a goniometer okay the next important topic is your crystallographic axis what is these crystallographic axis so these are nothing but in order to describe the faces and symmetry of crystals a set of three or four reference axes are established axes are nothing but just lines now these are imaginary reference lines which often coincide with symmetry axis or normal to symmetry planes see these symmetry axes and symmetry planes we'll be looking at when we'll be doing the elements of symmetry okay just for now understand what is crystallographic axis so they are nothing as i have told you they are just reference lines and they are imaginary you cannot see a crystallographic axis in the in a crystal these are imaginary lines so as in symmetry axis these aid in orientation of crystals and are important in explaining concepts as unit cells and miller indices when we looking at the parameters the miller indices the weiss system and there we'll be looking at what is the importance of these crystallographic axes so these will define a coordinate system within the crystal 
so for three dimensional space lattice we need three or in some cases we need four crystallographic axes that define directions within the crystal lattices you see this is uh, your crystallographic axis arrangement this is axis a this is axis b and this is axis c so normally the vertical crystallographic axis is labeled as c see the vertical one this is labeled as c the left to right axis as b the left to right axis as b and the front to back axis is generally taken as a so in the right side it is plus b left side it is minus b then in the back side it is a minus it is a plus in the front side the top this is c plus and in the bottom it is c minus also there is these uh, crystallographic axis angles the so angles between these crystallographic axis so if this is your b this is your a and this is your c then the angle between the axis b and c is known as your alpha when it is b and c it is known as alpha when this angle is between a and b a and b it is known as gamma and when the angle is between a and c it is known as your beta okay now another important topic is your axial ratio okay what is this axial ratio axial ratios are nothing but actually these are the intercepts which the face which the crystal face makes with your crystallographic axis so in the study of crystals the position of a crystal face in space is given by the intercepts the face or plane makes on three or four imaginary lines called your crystallographic axis so if there is a crystal face how you will define the position of this face so the position of that crystal face is given by the intercepts that the face or plane makes on three imaginary lines i mean what is this intercepts the places where the face is cutting your crystallographic axis that is your intercept okay so these axial ratios are defined as the relative lengths of crystallographic axis what is this relative length so if you are talking about any relative length then basically you take the relative to the length of the b crystallographic axis i mean if you want to know the relative nth length of a then you will take it with respect to b if you want to take the relative length of b you will take it with respect to b if you want to take the relative length of c crystallographic axis then you will take it with res respect to b so generally we take the relative lengths with respect to b where a is the actual length of the a crystallographic axis and b and c are also the actual lengths of the b and c crystallographic axis respectively c there is a b and c here might be saying seeing that there might be a face so that face is making your intercept or cutting your b crystallographic axis at one unit your c crystallographic axis at two units and your a crystallographic axis at two units so no need to go in these things we'll be looking at these parameters separately just for now understand what is this axial ratio this axial ratio is nothing but the relative lengths of a b and c crystallographic axis with generally respect to b axis okay so with this we have completed some of the most important terminologies under crystallography which will be useful in the further lectures so in the next lecture we'll start with the symmetry elements thank you so much